important remarks based on explanation based learning okay and especially discovering the new features right what we have understood is in explanation based learning we need a domain theory if our domain theory is proper and if it covers all the positive examples then it is possible for us to obtain an hypothesis which is consistent with all the positive examples of the data okay that is what we have learnt in the ebl now coming to the key properties of ebl it produces uh, uh, some of the generalized hypothesis using the prior knowledge that is what uh, uh, domain theory is using domain theory uh, it is possible for it to come out with the general hypothesis and the explanation about how an example satisfies the target concept it will determine how the attributes are relevant that is mentioned by the explanation okay so as i said if our explanation is uh, proper enough if our just um, uh, what we can say assertions are uh, complete then we can say that target concept can be achieved with the explanation right and coming to the regression the target concept to determine its weakest primage as we have seen in the previous class when we were discussing about uh, uh, prolog ebg algorithm regression dimension of uh, prolog ebg we have understood uh, we have to identify the weakest primage with respect to explanation which allows uh, uh, deriving more general constraints on the relevant features right and more importantly uh, it assumes that the domain theory should be correct and complete based on which uh, the processing of abl depends okay next as we further proceed related perspectives which is going to help and understand the capabilities as well as the limitations of abl is abl as a theory guided uh, generalization of examples okay we need a uh, a rational generalization of examples allows to avoid uh, sample complexity which is pure inductive learning okay and uh, it is guided reformulation of theories that is nothing but uh, reformulating the domain theory into more operational form that is what ebl is converting our domain into more operational form is what ebl is and it deductively follow the domain theory based on totally domain theory and uh, classify the observed training examples in a single inference step it doesn't need iterations it doesn't need repeated uh, uh, computation and processing to identify uh, the expected outcome or uh, uh, reach the target it in a single inference in a single step it is possible for the ebl to reach uh, towards the target concept okay and as we proceed further related perspectives which is going to help and understand the capabilities as well as limitations further proceeding to that ebl is just restating what the learner already knows that means what is our prior knowledge right what learner already knows is a prior knowledge right so in what sense does this quality help to learn right how this prior knowledge is going to help the quality of uh, classification or recognition is knowledge reformulation and situation okay in knowledge situation there are many tasks uh, that that uh, the difference between what one knows in principle and what one can efficiently compute in practice may be a great choice okay that is what knowledge reformulation what we already know and what can we efficiently compute in general that is a important advantage and coming to the situation uh, complete perfect domain theory is already known okay to the human learner and further learning is very simple so it's a matter of reformulating the knowledge into a form in which it can be more efficiently uh, used to select the appropriate moves okay especially in the case of uh, a checkers board problem uh, in the very first module while discussing about uh, designing a learning system good moves will be rewarded and bad moves will be uh, put a penalty like that how do we select all those is based on explanation here okay complete domain theory is already known to the human that is nothing but a learner and further learning is simple if we already know something about that then the rest of the thing is going to be very simple so it's a matter of reformulating the knowledge into a form in which it can be used more effectively to select appropriate moves right already known knowledge 
plus additional thing reformulating our knowledge is what ebl is okay so we have clearly understood the difference between inductive and analytical analytical is this ebl inductive is all other methods what we have seen including a and n okay which totally depends on the training examples so we need sufficient training examples over there here we need a domain theory which is complete enough to uh, co cover all the positive examples in that particular uh, task okay so and uh, also knowledge compilation okay knowledge reformulation situation and knowledge compilation explanation based learning involves reformulating the domain theory in order to produce the rules which can classify the examples in a single inference step okay that is what uh, it is capable of now this is very important for us discovering new features right interesting capability of this ebl is it can be uh, the ability to formulate new features that are not explicitly in the description of the training examples but are needed to describe a general rule with the underlying training examples right that is what the capability of ebl that means this feature is similarly represented by hidden units of the neural network what hidden units do in the ann how they fetch the features which is not even identifiable by the human beings so that is how this ebl is also capable of okay with a proper explanation okay which are uh, it is able to identify the new features which are not at all present in the description of training examples which is not at all described by anyone will also be identified that is what the interesting capability of uh, ebl is okay uh, it is same as that of the working of hidden units in the ann but ann works with more number of training examples but ebl requires only the domain theory only with the domain theory its performance is almost equivalent to ann so like in the back propagation algorithm what we have seen even prolog ebg automatically formulates such features in its attempt to fit the training data even prolog ebg is almost similar to ann and it is also try to fit the training data fit the training data is nothing but use all the positive examples and try to classify them properly in all the scenarios right that is what uh, uh, formulation and fitting to the data but what will happen in neural networks it's developed in a statistical process that is what very important through a statistical process that means we need uh, weights we need a difference between the weights we need so many other parameters to completely uh, do a learning process in the neural network which is called as a statistical process but in the case of prolog it is derived in an analytical process this is a major difference right and here the examples derive the feature and uh, like volume into density should be greater than 5 like that examples driven method ebl is okay now coming to the summary uh, let us summarize this what are all the things that we have learnt in this analytical learning okay one important thing is we have used the first order on classes in the domain theory and we have learned the hypothesis explanation is a prolog proof uh, algorithm what we have learned is a prolog algorithm and the hypothesis ex expressed or taken from base is nothing but uh, uh, identifying the weakest primage of this proof as well as uh, uh, analytical methods are capable of identifying uh, some of the important features okay so uh, other deductive learning procedures can be able to extend the uh, deductive closure of the domain as well as uh, uh, some some algorithms like prod prodigies who have demonstrated the utility of explanation based learning and uh, uh, solution to that disadvantage here is purely deductive implementation such as prolong ebg may produce correct uh, output if the domain theory is also correct okay otherwise 
if the domain theory is not sufficient enough outcome may not be very good so prior knowledge or domain theory is very very important that is what you need to consider so that is uh, what we have learned in this ebl okay next we are moving on to the combination of both inductive as well as analytical learning earlier methods like decision tree concept learning ann are all inductive this ebl is analytical learning so let us combine both okay and we will see how the outcome or output can be uh, improved here what is the motivation for us to combine both is pure inductive methods formulate general hypothesis by recognizing empirical regular uh, regularities in the training examples which is nothing but it will observe a similar patterns in the training examples and it will be able to identify and it will be able to recognize empirical regularities what is common in all the training examples it will try to understand that that is what understanding the regularities in the training examples that is what uh, inductive methods will do in order to do this we have to provide a huge amount of training data we know that training data should be large enough otherwise regularities cannot be easily identified and advantage of inductive methods is they don't require explicit prior knowledge that means domain theory is not required and they can learn the regularities based solely on the training data only training data is enough for them to do the learning disadvantage here is it will fail when insufficient training data is given that is nothing but uh, if our training data is less uh, very small number of samples okay uh, it is something like um, out of uh, thousand uh, cases if i take or 100 cases of uh, pregnancy if i take the possibility of a woman or a pregnant uh, getting a twins is going to be a very less samples out of 100 so like that with a less number of samples algorithms fail inductive algorithms will fail less training examples will make them to fail that is a known thing and it can be misled by the implicit inductive bias they must cope with uh, within order to generalize beyond the observed data and uh, if the training data are large enough they may totally depend on the training data and their generalizing capability beyond the data will be lesser okay overfitting of the data underfitting of the data is our problem there in analytical methods pure analytical methods which use uh, prior knowledge to derive uh, generalized hypothesis deductively okay so here they will come out with a generalized hypothesis deductively with the prior knowledge that is what we have learned in the previous concept advantage over here is it can accurately generalize from a few training examples by using prior knowledge right fewer training examples is advantage but less amount of training data will lead to a failure in the earlier case you need to observe the differences over here few training examples is enough over here but when the insufficient training data is earlier methods will fail so there is uh, some of the concepts that we need to retrieve out of this so that we can combine these two coming to the disadvantage it can be misled when given incorrect or insufficient prior knowledge right here if the prior knowledge is not sufficient outcome is going to be worse okay but in the earlier case if the sufficient insufficient training data is given outcome is going to be very bad so look at the similarities over here and by doing the combination what we are trying to do over here is for the better accuracy on the generalization ultimately what we require a generalized hypothesis is what we require right so for better accuracy on the generalization when prior knowledge is available and the reliance on observed training data overcomes the shortcomings of the prior knowledge okay that means better outcome on the generalization when we have a prior knowledge okay as well as we have observed training data both can suffice each other when prior knowledge is enough 
training examples required is less when training examples is less we need a better prior knowledge that is what the combination is all about okay let me show you like this domain theory training data when we have a sufficiently uh, sufficient uh, i mean correct domain theory then training examples required may be less okay, it is enough but in case we have a, a lesser prior knowledge then we need more amount of training data that is what the combination is all about okay now coming to the uh, further um, explanation towards the motivation inductive learning and analytical learning what is the goal over here is we need to identify the hypothesis that fits the data here we need a hypothesis which fits the domain theory as well as the one which covers the data okay so that is what the goal in both the methods both the different types of learning what is the justification over here is it is totally dependent on statistical inference here it is a logical inference logical prior knowledge is required what are the shortcomings or pitfalls over here is scarce data may lead to a problem incorrect bias will also lead to a different outcome here imperfect domain theory will lead to a problem okay so coming to the advantages it requires less knowledge prior knowledge here it generalizes even from the less amount of data that is what uh, if we want to uh, summarize what is the motivation for us to combine both the methods now what is the justification over here is logical justification uh, as well as the output hypothesis follows deductively from the domain theory as well as from the training examples but in the case of inductive statistical justification is required okay the two approaches work well on different types of problems inductive learning works on plentiful amount of data no prior knowledge analytical learning works with perfect prior knowledge with less amount of data right so the most practical learning problems lie somewhere between these two extremes right extremes is nothing but plenty of data may not be available very good amount of uh, all the prior knowledge may also not be available okay both b more amount of b as well as more amount of d are the two extreme scenarios in which the practical problems are lying in between okay so let us consider an example in an, in order to understand analyzing a database of medical records in order to learn okay symptoms for which treatment x is more effective than treatment y okay that is one thing analyzing a stock market database in order to learn the target concept what is nothing but companies whose stock value will double over the next months okay these are some of the practical learning scenarios we are also interested in systems that take prior knowledge as an explicit input to the learner and what is the goal over here is domain independent algorithm that employ explicitly input domain dependent knowledge that is what our goal is domain independent algorithms now combining these two is nothing but given no domain theory it should learn at least as effectively as purely inductive methods okay no domain theory let it be act as a inductive given a perfect domain theory it should learn at least as effectively as pure analytical method if there is a sufficient amount of domain theory let it be pure analytical in nature imperfect domain theory and imperfect training data what it will do it is going to combine both and it is going to outperform either inductive or analytical method okay so this is what is our interest there are scenarios where we don't have enough training data there are some scenarios where we don't have a prior knowledge okay so that will lead to a problem so we are combining both the methods so and also it should be able to accommodate an unknown level of errors in the training data and it also able to accommodate uh, unknown level of error in the domain theory so both possibilities should be explored with the combination of both the methods right unknown level of errors should be accommodated in the training data unknown levels of error that means even though there are errors in the training data even though there are errors in the domain theory the algorithm what we are going to develop by the combination of both inductive methods as well as analytical methods 
should outperform both of these okay so active current research is nothing but we do not yet have algorithms that satisfy all these constraints in a fully generalized fashion okay so still it is under research where we don't have uh, the complete combination of both the methods available okay now as we further proceed inductive analytical approaches to learning right what is given over here is a set of training examples d possibly containing errors it is not error free it is a data with the errors and also we have a domain theory b possibly containing errors that means domain theory is also not sufficiently enough it may also contain the errors and we have a hypothesis space capital h now it is our duty to now it is our goal to identify an hypothesis okay one of the hypotheses or group of hypotheses or a set of hypotheses which are consistent over the training data what we are going to determine here is a hypothesis that best fits the training examples as well as the domain theory what is the meaning of best best fit over here is minimize some combined measures of the error of both the hypothesis over the data as well as domain theory that means an hypothesis which can be able to provide less error okay less error with respect to the training data as well as with respect to the domain theory okay so try to identify that kind of hypothesis is what our goal over here right next coming to the learning problem what is that we need to concentrate over here is so learning problem let us understand this defining measures for the hypothesis error with respect to the data as well as with respect to the domain theory that means argument minimum one of the hypothesis belong to the hypothesis space okay so k is uh, one of the constant okay uh, are called as a weight error should be as less as possible with respect to the training data and error should be less with respect to the domain theory the, both the combination of error so both the errors will be added so it should be as minimum as possible that is what argument minimum is we have to obtain an hypothesis which provides as minimum as possible error with respect to domain theory as well as with the training data okay so the proportion of examples from d that are misclassified by h is nothing but error error d of h that means misclassified by h training examples which are misclassified by h is error d of h and the training uh, and uh, misclassified with the domain theory is error b of h which is nothing but the probability that h will disagree with the domain theory by classifying a randomly drawn instance okay kd and kb both are the constants these two are the constants okay if we have a very poor theory and great deal of reliable data it will be best to weight error d of h more heavily reverse the scenario given a strong theory but a very noisy data the results would be obtaining one we will be relying morely on error b of h okay have a look at this concept is very simple we need a minimum error hypothesis if this error is very high that means with respect to the uh, domain theory if the error is too high then we will try to minimize this reverse case if this error is too much then we will rely on this error right but the learner does not know the quality of d as well as b in advance of course whether there is an error or there is no error we will not be knowing about that so it is unclear how these two errors components should be weighted with this knowledge of uh, not knowing the quality of training data as well as the domain theory 
nobody knows in earlier whether the training data is proper or not or whether the domain theory is proper or not nobody knows so how do we weight both of these errors is unclear okay 